I would want to acknowledge the presence of Dr. Jamal Seidu Tanzwa, who is a private legal practitioner. He is a, a lecturer at the Gimpa Law School and also a former adv legal advisor to Operation Vanguard. Please, let's put our hands together. <laughs> so talk about Operation Vanguard. You know, I think you were the first group of officers who were sent into the bush to go and stop illegal mining. But with all, all the issues that came with Operation Vanguard, you are, you are here, so you tell us. Also, thankfully, we have the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission. You remember, just a few days ago, they issued a statement detailing how this illegal mining is impacting on us with issues that we can't even see with our eyes. And to give us just a five minutes um, presentation, we have Dr. Frank Kobla Kwashi, he's the Vice President of the Research Scientists Association, Ghana Atomic Energy Commission. Just a few words from you before we get into the panel conversation. Please, let's put our hands together. Thank you very much. Good morning. I also like to stand on the existing protocols. Like he said, I'm from GAEC with the Research Scientists Association. On the 18th of September, together with our brothers from CSIR, the Research Staff Association, we issued this press statement. And what we are trying to say is that currently, Galamse has become a national security threat and it affects all of us. It has, we've said all the environmental issues. Currently, we are talking about climate change a lot. There's a lot of issues about climate change and there are a lot of things coming out from Galamse because of climate change. So for us as researchers, we've done a lot of work in these Galamse areas. Almost all our water bodies have been destroyed. Now going there to even do research work has become more expensive because sometimes you don't even get access to the places you have to do this research. So it's very difficult for even our own researchers to come out with proper findings because you don't get access to these Galamse sites and you are troubled. We also know that, as we, has been said already, Ghana water, we are all complaining. Now we are rationing water. And these are issues of Galamse. You may think it's not affecting you here because you are not close to a water body, but we all use water. There are serious health implications. People have talked about mercury, arsenic, most of these heavy metals bioaccumulate in us. These heavy metals, and research have found out that most of them are, some have serious carcinogens. And we develop these health issues without knowing the cause. Because some studies that you need to do to know, I have cancer. What form of cancer do I have? Is it cancer of the lungs? Where is it coming from? We are not able to do these epidemiological studies here to know this is the real cause of this cancer. So what the Research Scientists Association of both Ghana Atomic Energy Commission and CSR are saying, like we said, with this EPA forest law, Honorable is here, maybe when he gets the time, he will explain to us how we can repeal this law, because we think that is the first thing that should go. As researchers, we don't understand why we should have a law that will let, because we have biodiversity issues. As God created this world, there are certain things God himself has put in the world to control nature. But as human beings, if we destroy it, we are destroying our own selves. So we as researchers, we believe this is the way to go. We also believe that government should liaise with the research institutions. We are talking of reclamation of these fields. You have researchers you are paying money to but there's no real collaboration with researchers on how some of these things can be done. Director is here. When you come to CSR or Ghana Atomic Energy Commission, you have energetic young men and women who can help us deal with some of these issues. So we are appealing to government to take the opportunity because we have the human resource. 
We have the human resource to do this work. So we are appealing to government to help us in doing this. We also, like others have said, there should be a moratorium on small scale mining. We should see some changes because we can't do the same wrong things all the time. We should see some real changes in our water bodies. Because as we are here, we've heard there was a time that you hear the sea has been closed. Why do we close the sea? So that at the proper time, we will we'll have bumper harvest. If our waters are not good and we are suffering from it, why can't we also put a moratorium on small scale mining and illegal mining for a period? If it's one year, depending on what research will tell you, can reclaim the water because water is life. Water is life. Also, we, we also want to say that because of, in our statement, government can create livelihood alternatives for those in the mining areas because we know why they are doing the mining. We know, if we say we don't know why they are mining, then we are wrong. So when we have livelihood alternatives, some have been tried, but you see, the way we go about it, when we have a thorough one, because we know we are going to put a moratorium on mining, we sit down, design something that will be lasting. That when you go there, you know, because the person mining is also having a relative, maybe suffering from what Galamse is doing to the community. But when we have an alternative, for people in mining. I'm sure maybe the money will not be as good as Galamse, but as rational human beings as we are, and with the law backing it, I'm not sure those people will even attempt to go back and do what we are calling for, this illegal mining. So we believe that there's a lot we can do as people in Ghana. And the last thing I want to say is that Organized labor has spoken, but we are not speaking as a, as a body. This is affecting Ghana. It's not only affecting a group of people in Ghana. So for us as research scientists, we believe everybody should speak. Everybody should think Galamse is a problem. We should start speaking about Galamse in our homes. What are the remedies? What can we do? What can we also do to help government's effort of solving Galamse? And when we do some of these things, we have to catch them young. We have kids coming up today. They don't know what really we are doing about Galamse. All they hear is Galamse. What are we doing as a people to help in taking this canker off our system? So for us, maybe we'll share our press release and most of the things that I say, we also believe there should be a proper national dialogue of all stakeholders because this thing cannot be done by government alone. Government will have to bring solutions, civil society, research organizations, we all have to come together and look at a document that we can use to help mitigate this issue of Galamse. The, the human resource, like I said already, abounds in the country. So we shouldn't leave this thing alone on a few people. It concerns you, it concerns me. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Frank Kwashi is the Vice President of the Research Scientist Association with the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission there. The things that we don't see with our bare eyes, they see it, and that's a threat that we're faced with. And to lead us straight into the panel conversation, I want to lay the foundation about the issues about security. Government's first approach to dealing with illegal mining, at least from 2017, was to deploy the military. And we saw all the issues that are played out. There was um, Operation Vanguard and Operation Halt 1 and 2, and, and a few others as well. A man who was closely associated with the first operation will give us a brief foundation layout of what, what exactly we need to do going forward. What next? Because now the government is talking about the deployment of the police, police after the military. So is this the way to go? Dr. Jamal Tonswa. Um, 
is a lecturer at the Gempa Law School and also former legal advisor to Operation Vanguard. Please let's put our hands together for him. Thank you. Thank you. Does the microphone work? Okay. Thank you very much and good morning to you all. Um, we stand at a defining moment where we may get it right or we may continue to fail, just as we have done over the years. For me, what is exciting is that there are lessons to be learned from our failures. One of the things that we need to do, I mean, oh, let's start with the question, where are we and what are we contending with? I am a bit disheartened when I hear that we have a national security crisis, we have a food security crisis and all that, and the speaker that came before me just talked about lack of coordination of a sort. I want to add to that and say that politicians are very smart people. They are listening to us and they are seeing all the weaknesses in the current discussions. What do we need to do next? What we need to do is shape the game. Take the rules away from the politicians. Is there anyone in this room who doubts that the leadership of this country is helpless as far as this galaxy fight is concerned? Is there anyone? Right. The organizers of this program started, uh, Mustafa has left us, he mentioned, he alluded to Article 1.1 of the Constitution, power and sovereignty resides in us and must be exercised in our interest and for our welfare. I would add to that, and at the end of this, my recommendation, and I'm asking, why is the national, um, why is the Council of State quiet on this matter? Why is Parliament pretending as if Article 278 of the Constitution doesn't exist. Of course, Opana is old, and probably his glasses are not even working well. <laughs> he may have forgotten about Article 278. All that, I'm, all that I am preparing your minds for is that this problem should be framed properly. The true framing is not that we have a national security crisis, we have an environmental crisis. The true framing is that we have a governance crisis, and at the heart of that governance crisis, we have structural institutional weaknesses, and that is where the action must be. Look, if we tell the politicians it's a national security problem, they will only give you Operation Vanguard again. If we tell them it's a food security problem, we'll see them addressing agriculture. Politicians are short term in their approaches. Let us take the rules away from them. It is a governance crisis. It is a structural institutional problem. And underlying it are all the manifestations we are talking about. We do not need management of the manifestations or the symptoms. We need actions that will target frontally the causes. A cure is what we need. How do we do this? The basic thing, we, we cannot pretend about it, an earlier speaker said it, is that there is no political will and commitment to fight Galamsey because there are vested interests in illegal mining in Ghana. And so if we leave the rules to people who are benefiting from it, they would only address the short-term woes that we have identified do their best and leave. What I think we should do is we need a sustained and a coordinated action, just as my brother from Gaek has said. This, we, look, even as of 2017, we did not need to tinker with any of our laws. I mean, as I, the ally, we are talking about, if we're going to enforce them, we could have addressed this problem. And so, I don't think we need to be talking about legislation again. I don't think we need to be talking about institutions. We need to resource them. We need to put resources where we get the best possible results and not just giving us boots in the field where we don't need them for more than three months. And I'm talking about the security forces. 
We don't need arrests, which will run into several thousands of suspected illegal miners. Whereas we have no idea about what to do with them in the criminal justice system, and we have not prepared. Look, the hotspots of illegal mining were Bekwa, Obuasi, um, Dunkwa Onofen, Chichore, and then um, you know Ayamfuri, all the way to Takwa Bogosu and all that. At the time, it will surprise you to know that only one judge sat in the courts of Obuasi, Bekwa, and Dunkwa Onofen. Can you imagine? Were we prepared to beyond what Operation Vanguard would do by way of arrests, uh, immobilization of what would become um, exhibits in court? What were we going to do with them? To throw them to the, in the air and say, hey, these are the statistics. This is the progress we are making. Is that a fair indicator? Is that backed by sound policy, science, data? What does it mean when we have institutions like Forestry Commission, Water Resources Commission, um, you know, the Minerals Commission, and they are working in silos? What does it mean when we are not resourcing them? Even the military did not have what they needed to do their work. Why were we deliberate in not complementing the effort of the boots with, with um, technology? <laughs> Why were the drones never given to the military? Why did the trackers never work on the excavators? Why did we not use satellite technology? Because we didn't tell the politicians we know what should be done. We just told them that whole oh, national security, we, we, we have an institution, we put them there, and they gave it to us. We must tell them that we know what we want. We must be data-driven and evidence-based in this new approach. How should we do it? Now I come to Article 278 of our Constitution. The sovereignty of Ghana resides in each one of us and all of us collectively and must be exercised in our interest and for our well-being. Article 278 of the Constitution tells us that where the executive, the president, believes that a matter is in the public interest, he should set up a committee of inquiry that will look into it fully, fairly, and impartially. The president is a lawyer. He recently received a lifetime achievement at the Ghana Bar Association um, recent General Assembly. But the point is, if the president overlooks this because of political expedience, parliament can by resolution request that he does that. And Article 278, the Council of State, who should be his conscience, his eyes, and his mind, have a mandate there. Ladies and gentlemen, all that I'm saying is that we've moved in a circle We've come to a point that we must come to the realization that the true power and the real solution lies in us. How should we exercise it? Let us tell them that we need a commission of inquiry to go and give us a more structured, full, impartial, data-based analysis of the problem. Let the problem guide us and let us have an independent body of Experts, we've seen Ken Ashibe and all the rest, but most, most of you are here, who would lead the process. Let there be transparency that every day any Ghanaian can know where are we and what monitoring um, indicators are we using. And let us strengthen mechanisms of accountability that any of us can walk to an institution and say that, look, we are demanding accountability from you or we are demanding accountability for uh, iris, uh, you know, illegal minors. And finally, let's ensure that the process would be inclusive, especially the youth must be there. I volunteer to be there. And I am happy to say that my law firm is actually the one leading the fight to revoke the ally. Thank you very much, and I wish you um, a successful deliberation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Jamal Tonzo. Thank you. Appreciate it.